welcome to Back to Way Bit. Today I'm going to look at something a little bit more modern than the standard 8 bit systems that I look at. Um, it's still classed very much as retro, the PlayStation 1, also known as the PSX core on the Mr. FPGA. Now, this is a core still very much in development. So if you are going to look at getting this uh, tested and tried out, it still may have bugs and it is still very much in its early days and there's still a lot of work uh, to be done on it. And I'm really impressed so far. And if anything that I've seen so far is to go by, the future of this core is going to be absolutely superb and I really am looking forward to it. Anyway, I'm going to quickly show you a demonstration on how to get this set up on your mister because you can't set this up using the usual update all script. There is a little bit of work uh, to do on it to get this set up, but um, it's not too difficult once you do know how. But the first thing you need to do, as per usual, is to go onto the GitHub website, uh, as you can see here. Now, Normally, you would have to download an RBF file from this site to be able to put it into your Mr. SD card. But this is a little different. You have to download a set of files to be able to create the RBF file using a separate piece of software. And this is what I'm going to show you. So first of all, you do need to download this pack by hitting the code button and downloading the zip file. OK, once you've done that, you then go to the download center for FPGAs and download the Quartus Prime Lite edition as per this link here. You can easily put this into a search engine as well and this page will come up. Now, you've got to make sure you're downloading the Quartus Prime Lite edition. You also need to make sure you change the release date down to 17.1 purely because the new releases of this is not compatible or there are errors when creating the RBF file. OK, so what you need to do is don't download these because if you just download this one initial program, it's not going to have the right additional software to do the job you wanted to do. So you click on the combined file option. OK, and then you download this here. OK, this file here. It's about 5.8 gigabytes to download. And when you install it, it's going to take about 20 gigabytes up on your hard drive. So make sure you've got enough room on your hard drive before you start this operation. However, once you've done the job, you can uninstall this program. But the only problem is if you get any updates for this software and you have to put, create a new RBF file, you're going to have to download this again. So it's worth keeping this on. Once you've downloaded it, you will then be able to extract the file and then install Qantas Prime. And it's a quite straightforward installation. It probably takes about five minutes in total. I won't do it here because I've already got it set up on my system and I just don't want to drag this video out any longer than it needs to. But just follow the on screen instructions how to install it and it will carry on. What I would advise is, is once it's finished installing, you will be given the option to launch it straight away. Untick that box because you don't need to do that. Once that's done, there is one more job to do. You need to find the file chph1001.bin and that's the ROM file. Now, I can't tell you where to find that. You need to find that yourself, okay, uh, just for legal reasons. But be very careful when you do search for this because when I search for it, there are quite a few dodgy sites out there with large files that I expect you to download when you hit this button. The file should be about 512 kilobytes. So just look out for that when you are downloading it. Once you've downloaded it, you then rename the file and call it boot dot rom okay that's done right then you move on to the playstation files the ones that you downloaded from the github website and as you downloaded it it was in compressed format so you need to extract that into an uncompressed format and then you go into that folder 
and you will see a PSX fold file there, okay, which is your main install. You just double click on that file, okay? And what will happen is, as we try and do it here now, it will launch Intel Quartus Prime, the probe that you just downloaded. Okay, just gonna make sure you've got Cyclone and System Top showing there. That's all good so far. And then you go to Processing and Start Compilation. Now this process will take probably about five to 10 minutes to do. So I will skip through part of the video here, just so not to bore you. But if you look at the bottom uh, right hand corner of the window, you've got a count there, it's only the time it takes and obviously the percentage it's done. So just ignore everything that's popping up here. Um, it's just doing all the work in the background. So don't look, so whatever happens, don't, you know, please don't get too disturbed about what is going on here. And fast forward a bit more. And as you can see, we're approaching almost a three minute stage here. And we're around 39, 40% done. So fast forward. Right, we're approaching now the 48% uh, stage and we're now eight minutes into this procedure. So as you can see, it does take quite a lot of time. So what I'm going to do is completely move to the end of this. Um, what will happen is when it gets to the 100%, it'll all be done and completed. And then you can close that program down. Okay, we've now completed that process. And if we go back to the directories where we created the PlayStation Mr. Main menu in the boot ROM folder. And if you go into the uh, Mr. Folder again, you will see a folder called Output Files. And if you go into there, there we are. The PSXRBF file has been produced. That's the only file that you will need at this stage. Okay. Okay. We now simply bring up our Mr. SD card up and all we, you, you see the familiar arcade computer console folders there. And we simply, as we would normally do, copy the RBF file across to the console folder okay now pay attention to this because these are labeled psx and depending on which revision you've downloaded it could be playstation or it could be psx and you need to make sure we replicate that when we create the folder in the games directory so what we now need to do on the sd card on the mister is go into games directory create a new folder and call it PSX and again if the if the RBF file is a PlayStation file then you must call that PlayStation but as it's PSX you keep it PSX otherwise the boot run will not work so we're going to that folder We then find the boot ROM and we copy that across. Also, inside the PlayStation folder that we downloaded from the GitHub website, same place where the eight put files are, there's a memory card folder. It's, it'd be worth at this stage going to that folder and bringing across the empty MCD file and it will just allow you to use a memory card right from the off. Okay, that's all you need to do. The next thing is insert the card back into the mister and fire up your new PSX core. Okay, I fired up the mister and it's time to test the core. Go down console. And we should see the PSX core listed. Mm. 
There we go. And let's try a game on it. Spacing invaded this game while we wait for the uh, game to load. Well, I mean, it's been a while since I played this game. Let's give it a quick go. Ridge Racer. Ooh, a bit of wheel spin there. Oh, I'm not doing very well here. I do miss uh, the analog controllers on the new PlayStations. Okay, well, I think that's enough from me. I hope you found the uh, video useful. If you did, give us a like, subscribe to the channel, and hopefully we can share you some more in future dates. Take care for now. Bye.